Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes ask him, what do your disciples, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. When people go to great lengths to appear holy, well, that often gets my suspicions started. Why must someone go to great lengths to make me think that they are holy? These are the thoughts that come into my mind. And often, not always, but often, it is an attempt to hide their own dirt. You know, just think of Josh Duggar, for those of you that know who that is and all of the problems that have come to surface. So on the surface, we could say that this text today is about dirt, but can it be so simple? Can we say this is just about cleanliness? You know, one of the places that people take the idea of cleanliness and combating germs seriously is in the hospital. When I go to visit people, the, the, one of the things that I notice are the number of dispensers of that hand sanitizer. Every room, every hallway, every, every, every place in front of an elevator, outside of the bathrooms, everywhere you turn. There's a dispenser for hand sanitizer. And then there are the people I visit that have the big red stop sign on their door when you get to the door. And then you know that you're supposed to gown and glove, put those beautiful yellow gowns that they offer and gloves uh, to put on when you go visit the person just so you are protecting yourself as much as you're protecting the person that you're visiting. I was thinking about all of this this week as I as I, as I spent most of my day Thursday in the hospital witnessing the birth of, of our first grandchild. As I was sitting there, and as you know, if you've, you women, I, I say this, if, you, if you've ever been to a birth, some of you fathers have, have, uh, have been there on the occasion of the birth of your children. But uh, as you know, this is not a quick thing, although we've had several stories recently of women giving birth in cars, which I, I don't advertise that as a good way to go about having children. And I don't know why people wait till the very end. Why am I talking about this? But it just bothers me that there are babies being born in cars. But anyway, as I was sitting there, trying just to take in all that was happening, there was a sign on the door. And the sign wasn't meant for me, it was meant for the people that worked there, but it said in big letters, Hand washing will save your patient's life. Hand washing will save your patient's life. In this day and age, of course, we know that to be true. 
And if you work in a hospital, if you work in a daycare, if you work in the food preparation industry, you know that hand washing is an imperative. It's a command. Do it. Cleanliness isn't necessarily in their minds next to godliness. Cleanliness is a matter of life and death anymore because it prevents diseases like E. coli and other kinds of things being spread. So do we really think that the Pharisees were like your mother when you were a kid, uh, that they were telling them to wash your hands before you eat? The key to understanding their point, the Pharisees' point of view, comes in verse 3, where it says they were adhering to the tradition of the elders. The tradition of the elders. And this tradition is a carryover from temple worship, where the priest, before going into the tent of meeting, was commanded in Exodus 30, look it up. Exodus 30, he was told, you must wash your hands and your feet before entering into the tent of meeting. It was then, it says, to be a perpetual ordinance. But was it a sign of purity? It was to be done in perpetuity, which means forever. Do this forever. But it didn't necessarily serve the purpose of killing bacteria. Knowing it comes from the elders, this practice was then passed along from generation to generation with the understanding that it would never stop. And so the Pharisees were focused on the practice, not the purpose. After all, can a fistful of water, and that's what the, the Greek renders that when they when they wash their it's a fistful of water. Can that? You can't do that and sing happy birthday, right? That's a good question. A fistful of water. Jerry? No? No. So it wasn't about killing bacteria. The other point is, can a fistful of water in this act of washing your hands, can it make your heart clean? And this is what Jesus is pointing out. That this hand washing, this ceremonial act isn't cleansing anything. It isn't doing anything except allowing them to hide behind their own dirt. And by dirt here, I mean their sinfulness. Because they have no idea... They have no idea how to really resolve their sinfulness with their need to be holy. So Jesus perceives that this has become an act. When Jesus calls them hypocrites, that word hypocrite comes from the Greek hypocrites, and it means one who plays a part. It comes from the uh, world of theater. And so they were just acting the part, Jesus says. They're acting like they're holy people. And in fact, their behavior now becomes a roadblock. They're determining who is loyal and who is not. Their behavior now is something that divides. It has become a barrier. It's become a wall, a separation between insiders and outsiders, between who is holy and who is not. And that makes Jesus angry. So how do we apply this to our lives today? Well, let me, let me share this with you. You know, it has been the tradition of the pastor at the beginning of a service and at the end of a service to make the sign of the cross. And over the last 20 or 30 years, there's been a push for lay people to participate in making the sign of the cross along with the pastor. And when, when I look out, and it's not just here, but, you know, I've been associated with, oh boy, five, six, seven churches now in my 15 years of seminary education and being a pastor. I see a smattering of people. Not everyone. I see a smattering of people who make the sign of the cross with me. And the people who don't, most likely, will say that either, well, they feel that's too Catholic, capital C, Catholic, they feel that's too Catholic, 
Or that's the pastor's job. The pastor's job is supposed to make the sign of the cross. Or people will think that if I do it, people are, are going to think that I'm trying to be too holy. And I would say most of the people who don't do it probably fall into one of those three categories. Is it wrong to make the sign of the cross? No, unless your heart is in the wrong place. If you're doing it so others will think that you are more holy, then yes, your heart is in the wrong place. Can this practice make you closer to God? The practice can't, but in doing the sign of the cross, it can help you at that time focus more on your relationship with God. And one more thing, all of the gestures that we do during worship need to have an education associated with it. Because all of the things we do can become a dividing line. They can become a point of barrier between people. And we don't want this practice to make outsiders feel more like outsiders. Like they're not part of the in-group uh, because they think that they have to have some prerequisite knowledge. There's no need for us to put our holiness on a plate and hold it out for all to see. There's no need for us to think that we can or we need to try to hide our sinfulness either. Jesus is just as capable of loving us in spite of our dirt without our extensive attempts to try to hide that dirt. Jesus says there's nothing outside a person that can defile. It's the things that come out that defile. When we do something just for show, or when doing holy things are replaced for doing ministry, then we have joined the long line of Pharisees that have come and gone throughout the years who wanted so much for people to think that they were holy. Those who rely on these acts of holiness have no true understanding of God's grace. And of course, this isn't what James means when he says, be doers of the word, not just hearers. He's not saying, be sure to show that you're holy. Instead, we need to be getting ourselves dirty, working with those who have no more strength to hide their own dirt because they have not yet come to understand what grace is all about. You see, I like to think of grace as the great heavenly, holy hoover. It's the great scrubber. Grace is what sucks the dirt, washes the dirt of sin out of our lives and leaves us looking as clean as ever, at least through Jesus' eyes. Knowing that grace, that the grace of God that comes through Jesus Christ and the cross event, that's what makes us acceptable to God, allows us to see what really matters to God. And what really matters is serving others, serving those, taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who don't know, have never heard, don't understand what grace is all about. So you see, washing your hands may save your life from the dirt of bacteria, but it will not save you from the dirt of sin. But Jesus will. His grace through the cross is what saves our lives. Amen?